All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're here to talk about the Boston Celtics, who are now the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. L just let that sit for a second. The Boston Celtics, who a handful of months ago, people were talking about who should they trade, Tatum or Brown? Because obviously this isn't working. They're the first seed in the Eastern Conference. This team, especially defensively, the Boston Celtics are 100% capable of winning the NBA Finals. I think people are finally starting to come around to that idea. This defense is so unbelievably talented. The Minnesota Timberwolves in the calendar year of 2022, so we're about three months in, number one offense. Number one offense. Tonight, the Boston Celtics won 134 to 112 against the number one offense. D'Angelo Russell had four points. Four points. Carl Anthony Towns, 19 points. And keep in mind, the Boston Celtics were missing some players tonight. Yet, they play one of the hottest teams in the entire NBA, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have a chip on their shoulder right now in a playoff-feeling game. Playoff implications for both teams. Even though they're in separate, or separate conferences, they're fighting for standings, right? You're fighting for seedings. You're trying to get the best seed possible. I'll say this. Boston's going to finish number one seed. I would say that is 100% in my mind the Boston Celtics are finishing as the number one seed. Now, Miami is tied with them. There's not a soul on planet Earth who is afraid of the Miami Heat right now. Not a soul. There's not a single soul. There's a reason, actually, that the terminology or the saying, I should say, not terminology, there's a saying, defense wins championships. And that's because it's true. Take last year, for example, Milwaukee Bucks. Obviously, you have your core three, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Offensively, Milwaukee, super solid. But defensively, last season, Milwaukee, just different level. What One of the reasons I would give Milwaukee so much credit last year is the, the cohesion, the, the way their players complemented each other, especially on the defensive end. You have several guys who can play multiple or guard multiple positions. You have guys who are freaky athletic. You have your core defensive player, Giannis Antetokounmpo, kind of leading the way. I see a very similar thing with the Boston Celtics. What we learned last year, not only from the Milwaukee Bucks, but from the Phoenix Suns, you don't even have to be a phenomenal three-point shooting team. I believe actually Phoenix had like a 33% three-point rate last year in the playoffs, and they made the finals. So Boston has every piece you need. Every single piece you need. Welcome back to the channel, though, man. We're back at it with a Celtics video, as I'm sure you can tell. Hit the like button. Hit that sub button. Celtic Nation, if we can get 134 likes on today's video, that would be absolutely awesome. I've been making almost daily Celtics videos, so if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit that like or hit that subscribe button. We're about, I think, 10 subs away from 10.4K, so I appreciate you guys. Celtics Nation, you guys have really been blessing this channel as of late, and uh, well-deservingly, I feel like... You know, Boston is obviously not a small market. For some reason, no one really talks about Boston. Yeah, maybe you'll, like, if anything, you'll get, like, Celtics fans talking about Boston. But, like, for some reason, no one is thinking about Boston right now. And I think tonight's win's going to change that. I think tonight's win against a red hot, maybe they're not red hot, a hot Minnesota Timberwolves team who is, I mean, they're climbing up the West. But Boston, the number two ranked defense so far in the season, number one ranked defense in 2022, this is a scary team. And tonight you had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown go for 30 plus. If you have two capable players of scoring 30 points on any given night, which, you know, insert Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, teams should be afraid. I mean, teams should really be afraid. I, I think one of the hugest parts about winning a finals is everything clicking at the proper time. Let's use Golden State as an example. Golden State, up until Draymond Green got injured, number one defense in the NBA. They were red hot. They were the number one seed. Like, it was really looking, and they didn't even have Clay. It was looking like Golden State 100% was going to win the final. Not 100%, but it was looking like they were a very clear favorite to win the finals. Well, Dre goes down, you know, even Clay comes back. But look at Golden State right now. Not only are they injured, 
but they're not that hot right now. They keep losing to teams like the Atlanta Hawks, and you're not going to win the finals if you're losing to the Atlanta Hawks. No disrespect. That might be the first round matchup of the Boston Celtics, but like, I know they made the Western or the Eastern Conference Finals last year, but are teams really afraid of the Atlanta Hawks? I would have to say no. So insert the Boston Celtics. Teams who get hot and start clicking at the right time, and I'll say this, dude. Not only is Boston winning basketball games, they're blowing teams out. Majority of the Boston Celtics wins as of late. They're right now on a, what is it, like a, they're on like a 27-5 and run in their last 30 or so games. It's crazy. But like half of them have been blowouts. At no point tonight, except for maybe tip-off, after seeing the way Boston was playing, seeing the way they're playing together, seeing Jason Tatum, seeing Jalen Brown go off, I, I never really thought that, and in fact, to start the game, I never really thought Minnesota was going to win. You have to be afraid of red-hot teams no matter where they are in the standings. But when we look at Boston, we look at a team that was, you know, maybe Boston as an organization was about to throw the towel in, but you had the whole NBA and media world saying, Boston are frauds. This clearly isn't working. Trade Jalen Brown. Trade Marcus Smart. Do something to make your roster better. Shout out Brad Stevens. The guy's an absolute genius. The guy's like, no, we're not doing that. We just need to get healthy. We just need to start getting the chemistry going. And they go out, they make two moves. You get Daniel Tice and you get Derek White. And tonight, Derek White, 15 points, 6 assists. Daniel Tice, plus 17, third on the team as far as plus minus goes. And it's like, maybe Derek White and Daniel Tice won't shock you statistically, especially coming off the bench. These are two championship players. And so you give Boston not only the most underrated player in the entire NBA, Robert Williams, tonight, this man, in just 24 minutes, missed one shot. He had 13 points, 10 rebounds, a steal, and a block. I literally think he's the most underrated player in the entire NBA. You're without Al Horford, who... You know, casual fans can be like, okay, who cares? Eh. Al Horford's a huge piece to their success. Just another piece, just another piece that they have. You have guys like Grant Williams, who I've seen some comments saying most improved. Grant Williams' future is bright as hell. His future is bright as hell. Then you got guys coming off of the bench, the two players I mentioned, Daniel Tice and Derek White, who Daniel Tice, we have championship championship experience. We have Derek White, an up-and-coming potential player who's been in the league for a minute now where it's not like he's going to be afraid of the moment. That's you know some concerns that young teams have. I'll use Memphis Grizzlies as an example where it's like some of these players, how are they going to play in the playoffs? I'm not worried about Memphis, but we're not here to talk about Memphis. You throw on Peyton Pritchard into the mix, a guy who can shoot lights out, can play make, which is something Boston desperately needed. But like, who, who's stopping Boston right now? I, I, it's honestly like if I had to put money on a, a finals matchup, I would probably go Phoenix and Boston, and that would be one hell of a final. So. My point of this video is don't sleep on the Boston Celtics, man. They're here to stay, and they're here to stay for a while. If it's not this year, it's going to happen. So hit the like button, hit that sub button. Let's try and hit 134 likes on today's video. Drop some comments down below. What are your thoughts on the Boston Celtics right now? I hope Boston Celtic Nation pulls up in the comment section and just spews out facts. So that's it. Peace.